What's poppin' everybody? Said Rolf Runner 4. We're gonna do a deck analysis on Guardi Galia today. I know I said on the Haymaker video this wasn't gonna be a consistent thing, talking about these old decks, and it still won't be. I'm not gonna do this every day. But I really enjoyed uh, the video I made with Haymaker talking about that deck. And I think I really enjoy this series talking about these past decks. So I'm gonna keep at it. We're gonna do some more. Okay, we're gonna look at Guardi Gala today uh, from the 2009, 2000, oh actually 2008, 2009 format. And once again, I'm gonna show you guys the deck list. This is from Jason Klasinski's articles. Once again, if you go check him out, you can see the deck. You can uh, hear what he has to say about the format and stuff and the decks. And this actually quite a good list to show because of course Jason Klasinski is a master but he actually won worlds with Guardi Gallet so all the more reason to listen to him he knows what he's talking about it's not with this deck but you know the the idea is I guess more or less the same maybe there's some additions to counter stuff that got released later on and you play it sort of differently but it's Guardi Gallet nonetheless now you guys see the list there's a big Pokemon line, 27 Pokemon, 18 trainer cards, and 15 energies. So you guys might be pretty surprised to see, you know, so many Pokemon and, you know, just not as much as supporters and trainers and stuff. And we're going to talk about that. Now, Haymaker is the definition of an aggressive, disruptive deck, a good example of that. And Guardi Gallade is a great example of a lock deck, one of the best. And Guardi Gallade is unique because... Uh, compared to other lock decks, this deck can also hit very hard, and it also has a toolbox element to it. We're going to talk about that. The best way to start, of course, is to talk about the heart and soul of the deck, uh, Gardevoir and Gallade. And let's see, uh, Jason Klesinski has Spirit Tomb first, but I think I want to start with uh, uh, Guardi Gallade anyway. He runs the four routes, your basic Pokemon, you got to run these. Uh, there weren't very too many options with the routes. I think we had... Uh, Two different options. The legal sets for this format is Diamond and Pearl through Arceus. So it's basically three months before the hard gold, the first hard gold soul silver set came in. So this is actually a completely illegal format. And Jessica Klasinski really likes, you know, separating the sets with, you know, the era they're compatible with. And I like that. I feel the same way. Now the hard gold sets, you could say they're compatible with the DP sets too, but there's a sort of different charm without them. Uh, before hard gold soul silver, there was no DC, so Lux Chomp, even though it's still strong, it's not the strongest deck that, or at least as crazy as it was when Garchomp C level Lux got DC, and it makes for a healthier format, I believe. It makes a really good format. Domino Pearl through Arceus. Okay, so routes, he's running four of these, of course, the basic Pokemon you're gonna evolve to. Nothing really uh, special about it. Looks pretty cool. Nice. Then he's running uh, your two, let's see, or actually four Curlia. Okay, yeah, that, that's pretty significant. So four of Curlia. Now you would say, well, you know, why four? That's a lot of stage ones. Well, normally there'd be one or two, right? And you would be right, but there's a lot of things that are different in this format and why you see such a big Pokemon skeleton. Now this Curlia... I don't really think it's really anything special. You can search your Discord profile as a portal card and use the effect of that card as the effect of this attack. So I guess it gives you a nice little supporting effect if you leave it active and attack. Now the Platinum Curly, I think that's the only one. It's the only two sets where there's Curly and Routes cards in the Domino Pro format. I believe that one might be a little better attacker, doing 60 for 3 and stuff. But with this Telekinesis, uh, this Curly can do 40 Snipe, so it's not bad. So four of these, okay, and then the lines, of course, we have three Gardevoir and two Gallade. Now, Gardevoir is the heart and soul of the deck, very, very important. This is basically your main lock Pokemon, one of the strongest Pokemon ever released. And what made Gardevoir Gallade so good, I mean, it's bo both Pokemon contributed to it, but Gardevoir, you know, people would argue is the most important card. Now, Gardevoir is a stage 2 Pokemon, 110 HP, a 2 retreat, psychic weakness, so standard stuff. Its stats aren't the most impressive in the world. Uh, they're not bad for DP era, certainly not the standard you want to hit. I could have had 130 HP, maybe 120 would have been better. Better retreat cost. But besides, you know, the just average stats, uh, everything else is great. Psychic Lock is a fucking amazing attack. 
it does 60 for 3, just one sidekick and two colorless for the rest of the cast. So, you know, you could also use DC when that came out, and that revived, you know, Guardi Gallet for a bit when Heart Gold Soul Silver uh, came around, when DC came around. But even without that, uh, you guys are going to see this deck can function very nicely, even without DC. But this attack only does 60 for 3. It doesn't seem that impressive. But during your opponent's next turn, your opponent can't use any Poke Powers on his or her Pokemon. So a very, very powerful locking uh, effect. This is one of the strongest ways to lock an um, ability, a uh, power, whatever. Because unlike other methods, once Gardevoir attacks, you really don't have any way to just cancel the effect out and just try to bypass it. You know, it's really difficult, even if you knock out Gardevoir, even if you, I mean, if you attacked, you already attacked anyway. But there isn't much you can do. With other ways, like, let's say, Power Spray, with other ways, like, playing down a Mesprit and blocking powers, and all these sorts of methods, there were ways that maybe you could counter them, maybe you could do something, bypass them. But with Gardevoir, once, once it attacked, uh, you couldn't do anything. Which is why it was so powerful. One of the most effective ways to power lock. Its power was excellent as well. This is where the toolbox aspect comes in. With Telepass, once during your turn, you could search your opponent's discard pile for a supporter card and use that effect of that supporter. And you can only use one Telepass per turn, so you can't use this with multiple Gardevoirs. You guys can imagine, this is quite powerful. You basically have an additional supporter. It could range from anything, like using an additional Rosane's Research, using... I mean, I don't know, like a supporter to draw cards like Professor Oak. A powerful effect, you guys can understand. Very, very strong. Okay, so this is Gardevoir, your first sort of lock aspect of the deck. There's another one. Next up, it's going to be the heavy hitter, Gallade. Now, this is what's the special and cool aspect of this Stage 2 lock deck, is that Routes, Carlia, they have the option to evolve into both Gallade and Gardevoir. And when you have Gallade, you know, you have the sort of... Uh, power option to him. Gallade is doesn't really lock anything, but here's your attacker when you want to hit heavy. Sonic Blade, you put damage counters on the defending Pokemon until it's 50 HP away from being knocked out. And if you do, your opponent switches defending Pokemon one of a bench Pokemon. So this is a pretty good attack. You can put a lot of damage counters basically. If it was, let's say, a big 130 HP Pokemon like this Gallade, then you basically do like 80 damage and then your opponent has to switch. But you know, it's pretty solid for two energy, very good. Now, you could use this attack, there are fighting energies in this deck, but the main attack was going to be Sajikad. This is one of the strongest, actually not one of the strongest, it was the strongest attack of all of the DP era. No other Pokemon could do as much damage as Gallade did. Uh, with Sajikad, you do 60. And then you can reveal prize cards, your prize cards. For each one of them you reveal, you can do 20 more damage. So if you revealed all of them, basically what you could do, 6 times 2, yeah, 120. You could basically do 180 damage max for no cost. Now this is as good as it's going to get. This is like damage that was, you know, top dog during the black and white and XY era to get one hit knockouts on the X Pokemon. So doing this in the DP era, nothing was going to survive this. Not even the biggest level X Pokemon like Rapierior level X. Uh, they would need to be Waylord. They would need to be a defensive Pokemon like that with defensive add-ons, like maybe special metal energies, other ways to you know increase your HP. Nothing was going to survive that. And 9 times out of 10, you didn't even have to do that. Just doing, let's see, 160, 140 you know, was going to be enough. You get a one-hit knockout on... A stage 2 Pokemon, get the job down like that. Guardi Gallade and, I mean, fucking Gallade, just Gallade on its own. Being able to put the pressure on the opponent, get a knock out of nowhere. And this is what makes this deck a lot different than other lock decks. Most lock decks, they don't really have an, a power attacking option like Gallade. They didn't really have that. So it really makes it unique like that. You can attack hard with Gallade, you can get additional cards, get, use an additional supporter with Telepass and Gardevoir. And of course, you have all the locking options of powers and, you know, trainers, of course. We're going to look at Spirit Tomb pretty soon. Guardi Gallade, super strong deck, lock deck, heart and soul, Gardevoir and Gallade, the combo. Now, it's time to move to some of the other Pokemon here. This is basically your heart and soul of the deck. 
Gardevoir and Galite working together. The Pokemon you wanted to start with, and this is why Jason Klesinski has it first on the deck list, very important, is this Spirit Tomb. Now, Spirit Tomb only has 60 HP, no weakness and one retreat, but it has Keystone Seal. Now, as long as Spirit Tomb is your active Pokemon, both players can play trainer cards. So, nowadays, this would be item items for you guys that play just are familiar with these recent formats. Back then, if they had Spirit Tomb, you could still use supporters. It's not all trainers. Definitely, it definitely covered a lot of ground. Limited SP's options a lot. They couldn't use all of their effective tools, all of their Team Galactic inventions. And just, you guys understand, locking, locking trainers, locking powers, just locking cards and aspects of the game is always powerful. So with Spirit Tomb active, you were going to slow the game down. This is what you needed to do for a slower deck like Guardi Galate to get going. You know, you need to get your stage 2 Pokemon out. You need to slowly attach a bunch of energies because, uh, let's face it, with three energy attachments, you know, they were going to be slower than other decks. And Spirit Tomb was your way to do that. And with Darkness Grace, uh, Spirit Tomb's ability, you could evolve your Pokemon. This was a costless attack. You didn't have to attach energies. You search your deck for... Uh, card that evolves from a Pokemon, you put it onto that Pokemon. So this is where all the Curlias come in. It would evolve that way, and this was sort of your evolution method as well, relying on this Pokemon as opposed to Rare Candy. In fact, you're going to see that there's actually no Rare Candy in this deck if you're paying attention on the deck list. Not a single one. It's just going to be this guy and Broken Time Space. It gets the job done. So with Spirit Tomb and Gardevoir, you locked out trainers for the majority of the game, or for a, for a huge part of the game, at least anyway, for a good chunk. And then Gardevoir was going to lock out powers. So you always, almost always had some sort of lock going. So, you know, very powerful. You know, because Spirit Tomb was just a basic Pokemon, it could have easily been splashed in many decks. And this is why this is one of the most iconic and powerful lock-in Pokemon ever, basically. They work great together. Excellent synergy. Just stall, give you the time you need to... Evolve into your Gardevoirs and Galates. Lock, no matter what. Very good. Next stop, we're going to look at all the other Pokemon. And let's start with the Baltoid Claydol line. Claydol is basically a very famous Pokemon as well with Cosmic Power. This was your draw Pokemon for basically every deck, I would say. Only crazy people like me you know, wouldn't, wouldn't run a card like this. When Garchomp got DC, uh, that's important. Uh, be before that, I'd definitely run this Pokemon. But later on, I'd just rather rely on more supporter draw. Anyway, but as you guys see from this deck, there isn't as many supporters and trainer cards as in other decks. That's because people favored ability draw from Pokemon like Claydol, Pokemon like Uxi, and these sorts of methods. I guess you could say, like, some some decks these days, you know, relied on Octillery uh, before it got rotated out. Decks like Buzzle, decks like Gardevoir GX, you know, many decks relied on Octillery. It's basically the same idea. You rely on ability draw, maybe more than you re rely on supporter draw. Uh, Claydol, once during your turn, you can choose up to two cards from your hand, put them at the bottom of your deck, and draw until you have six. So, pretty good. You could say even better than maybe Octillery, because it gives you the option to remove cards from your hand that you don't need. Drawing until you have six is better than drawing until you have five. Pretty good. You know, spinning attack, two for 40. Obviously, you didn't want to attack with this Pokemon. It wasn't the point. But since this deck does have fighting energies, you can actually indeed attack. And 2 for 40, maybe I guess in desperate situations, uh, is not that bad. At least it has something. Ball Toy, your method to get into Claydol, is actually an important Pokemon too because it has a supporting role as well. With Psychic Balance, if you had less cards in hand than your opponent, you could draw cards and you have the same amount. So... Don't overlook Ball Toy, it can actually be used for support as well, you know, letting you draw cards. So this duel was excellent, of course, for support. Drawing cards, that's why they were in there. Next up, we have some text. Duskull, Dusklops, and Duskornor, Dusknor uh, line, one of each. The Duskull is going to be the Secret secret Wonders Duskull. We had quite a few in the Diamond and Pearl era. This one is probably the best because you can instantly play this down and evolve thanks to Reaper, Reaper Cloth, these mini effects that these Pokemon have, like ancient traits, you could say, can't be negated by anything. They just have these effects. 
and then one Dusclops. It seems Jason Klasinski favors the one from Stormfront. Yeah, that's the Stormfront one. Uh, dark, one eye. You can do 20 for one and discard a card from your hand. And if you do, your opponents discard a card from their hand too. So it gives you more disruption. Nice. Ambush. Could do 60, I guess, if you flip heads. There's a bunch of other Dusclops that are pretty interesting. I guess he's going with this one since he can attack quick. If it ever comes up. And then the reason you run these guys is to run Dusknor. Even more lock, lock-in capabilities. Uh, this was a very popular tech in many different decks. The Duskmoth from Dominant Pearl, it's probably the best Pokemon from that set. Uh, actually, was really strong in the beginning, and then it gained a very good supporting role with Dark Palm. You know, you could say it's like the Dark Cry X from that generation. That's that's the vibe I get. Uh, Dark Palm, once during your turn, if your opponent had a four or more bench Pokemon, uh, you could choose one of them and shuffle that Pokemon and all cards attached to it to the deck. So it basically limited your opponent's benched. You could do a lot of disruption tactics with this as well. So between all the locks and having this as well, you know, your opponent always had something to worry about. You were always giving them a hassle, basically. And you weren't going to attack with Dark Feelings, but it's actually a solid attack uh, in the early days of Diamond and Pearl, at least. Next up, we got Relicanth. Now, Relicant, this is from Supreme Victors. This is here strictly as a Luxray Geo Level X counter, I would say so. And just basically a counter to any Fighting Week Pokemon. Uh, it's a basic Pokemon with Grand Swell. You choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. It's going to do 30 damage to that Pokemon for each Pokemon tool and Stadium card your opponent had in play. So if they had a Stadium and at least one Pokemon tool out, you could do 60. If you did this on the active, uh, and it was a Fighting Week Pokemon that's 120, so it takes care of Luxray Geo Level X. It's going to take care of any other normal colorless Pokemon, I should say. Other Lightning Pokemon maybe weak to fighting. So it covers a lot of ground. This was before Don Fan, of course, was released. So, you know, he had to get creative and find these sorts of cards to work with. And, of course, Jason did so. This is a pretty solid card, if I say so myself. They have a bunch of tools out. Uh, SP decks usually did have... A few things that you know you can actually do a lot of damage it becomes like a good snipe attack even if they have three cards out that's a 190 snipe here not bad so pretty good relic kind of as a tech the next tech is going to be crobat g this pokemon sp pokemon used in many different decks because it's a plus power that you can put anywhere with flash bite you can put a damage counter one of your opponent's pokemon that's it uh, it's a free retreat dude, so if you open with it, there's no problem. Find a resistance useful, all around great card. Uh, there's also a poker turn in this deck, so you can reuse the effect. You know, sometimes, especially with Gallade, maybe you, it would have been better for you to just do 120, reveal, let's say, three cards, and then finish the, finish the KO off with Crobat if you were attacking a Pokemon with 130 HP. And then you can reveal three more and do 120. Things of that nature. So this is why Crobat just gives you the extra 10 that you need to get a one-hit knockout. Help you with KOs, basically, so that you don't waste more resources or, you know, sacrifice other important effects. Like with Gallade, you know, you can't reveal your prizes forever. So instead of re revealing four, you know, just reveal three, finish the job with Crobat. Uh, it's pretty good like that. I would imagine it helps with Gardevoir 2, hitting Machamp, let's say, for weakness. And then you finish it off with this. All sorts of interactions. All around great card. And then the last Pokemon is an unknown Q. This was basically our float stone of back then. You didn't really have any other better option. Uh, unknown Q, unknown quick. You could attach this to uh, one of your Pokemon if is on the bench. Discard all cards and attach it to one of your Pokemon as a tool card. And as long as it's uh, attached like that, you pay one colorless less to retreat. So you could say it's like an escape board without the sleep and uh, paralysis uh, effects, whatever that escape board has. It was as close to a float stone that you could get. I don't think we any we had anything else that was closer than that. In this deck, let's see, Gallade, you know, has to retreat, Gardevoir. So everybody basically has two. So I guess you just soften the blow. Uh, they either have two or they either have, you know, more than that. I believe only, yeah, Relicanth and... Spiritomb have one retreat cost, but it was a good way to actually get Spiritomb out of the way when you maybe wanted to, you got ready, you wanted to get out of the way and start 
power lock in with Gardevoir or make a big attack with Gallade. That's why it's in there. A flexible card. So these are all the Pokemon. A big Pokemon line, as I've said, you know, is a big Pokemon line because there's a lot of Curlius. You can evolve through Spirit Tomb. Of course, there's the Clay Doll and Ball Toy line. These, this is going to be your main method of drawing cards. There's all the text, Dusknor, Relic Half, Crobat, Iron Q, and it adds up before you know it. You obviously run more Stage 2 since you have Gallade and Gardevoir in the deck. So these are the Pokemon. Now for trainers and the supporters, we're going to start with the two broken time space he has there. Basically, a stadium that is your rare candy, infinite rare candy sort of thing. Uh, each player may evolve a Pokemon that he just played or evolved during that turn. So, like the Forest of Giant Plants for all Pokemon, this stadium is all around great from Platinum. Obviously, it helps your opponent too, which is why I'm always iffy on cards like these. I don't want to help out my opponent. But of course, this is what a stadium does. Both players can use it the right way. Not how you you fucked everything up. Anyway, of course, since you had you were going to have the Spirit Tomb active and your aim was to lock trainers, Broken Time Space is more consistent, of course. It's a stadium card, so you can play it down and instantly evolve as well. You could, let's say, use this, get uh, Curly out, and then just attack with Spirit Tomb, get Gardevoir out immediately. So it's not as slow as people would think. It would be. Rosane's Research is next. So four of Rosane's Research. We didn't have, as I've said, mentioned before, broken supporters like Sycamore and N, you know, these sorts of mass draw supporters. Supporters back then were sort of uh, one-for-ones. They did a specific thing. Rosane's Research was a way to get basic Pokemon, get energy cards in hand. So Max and this ad, ensuring you have basic Pokemon, get your basic Pokemon in play, grab those basic energies, you know, there weren't you no know, professor's letters. You didn't want to use energy search because it was weak. This was one of the flexible methods. This was, of course, before a collector came out too. So this card becomes even more important. So this is why you run this. Then we have BB Search, another sort of a one-for-one -one type exchange supporter. I guess BB Search is a plus one. This is a sort of a minus one, you could say. Uh, you pay a cost to play this card, shuffle a card back into the deck, and play this so you can grab any Pokemon. So this is good because as a supporter, you can play it through Trainer Lock. Trainer Lock is really big back then. A lot of methods to Trainer Lock. I mean, just with Spirit Tomb, you can imagine, you know, the format is stacked with a way to have a good, easy Trainer Lock. So BB Search didn't care as much as Communication and other Trainer cards that grabbed you Pokemon. Of course, this was before Communication came out anyway. So this was one of your, mo your most reliable options. I'm not the biggest fan of this card. I like BB Search sort of as a one-off, of course. It's a cool card, but I don't really want to rely on it too much. But the idea is, like I've said, your clay law is the way you draw cards. These are just sort of extras, BB Search. Just an extra sort of card to get you the Pokemon, use your supporter. Uh, clay law was your way to draw cards. Uh, it wasn't through cards like N and... Uh, uh, Sycamore and stuff. Of course, when uh, Professor Oak came out on the next set after Arceus, you know, you had the option to change shit up, which is what I did. But in this deck, for BB Search, pretty good. Next up, we have the Disruption, Team Galactic's Wager. So once again, this is before the Heart Gold Soul Silver sets came out, so this was before Judge came out. I'm pretty sure if Judge was out in that era, uh, Jason would run that card instead of Team Galactic's Wager. This is a pretty risky card, but it's basically your only way to sort of uh, limit your opponent's hand, uh, shuffle their hand into the deck, and hopefully they get less cards. You basically play rock, paper, scissors, or I guess people could flip a coin uh, if they wanted to, I think. The player who wins draws six cards, the player who loses draws three. So of course you wanted to win to draw a lot of cards, this is pretty good. But most importantly, you wanted your opponent to lose so that you could limit their hand. If they had hand bigger than three, let's say they had five or six cards, you know, they had to shuffle the hand back and just draw three, that's basically hand disruption. So pretty good. You wanted to do this in a lock deck like this. You did this, I think he mentions you want to do this basically when you use Gardevoir, so you know they don't have any powers, you've basically negated Claydol, and then you do this so that hopefully you make sure uh, that they can't do much on the next turn. They basically get an effective lock. So this is why this card is important. Three of these. 
then we have a Lucian's assignment. This is the sort of uh, expert coming out of JSON, a card that normally you wouldn't see people play. It's a tech, so you use this, move as many energy cards attached to one of your Pokemon as you like to another one of your Pokemon. This isn't actually an SP exclusive supporter, even though it seems like one from Rising Rivals. So this was one of their ways you could do the uh, move energies around shit. This deck, like I've said, doesn't really have any energy acceleration or is really fast with energies. You just kind of have to attach them. There is a card that sort of helps to speed up the process. That's like DC. We're going to talk about upper energy. But other than that, let's say if a Pokemon was going to get knocked out, maybe you wanted to do this, save the energy, attach it to a different Pokemon, have it ready, and then you know let it go. Maybe at least move some energies. Just do something. So it's a sort of an expert uh, player's card. You gotta time it right, use it right, of course. Takes up your support for the turn. But like I've said, Claylor was gonna be your main source of draw anyway. I can see why Jason would run this. And these are basically all of the supporters. Then we just have one switch, flexible card. Unlike the Haymaker days, there was no auto scoop up. You had to use super scoop up if you wanted that. So a good way to just switch. It's switch, it's what switch does, it's in the name. Then we have one night maintenance. The super out of back then. Uh, recover cards into the deck. Great card in general. You could recover basically anything with this. Put energies back in the deck that you might need. Shuffle in a specific Pokemon. Great, great card. Then we have the one of Luxury Ball. This was your Master Ball basically. Just grab any Pokemon besides the level X. And I actually need to mention it's important to note in this deck. I uh, forgot to talk about this. Of all of these Pokemon, you guys can see there is no Gardevoir level X in this deck. Gardevoir did have a level X that came out in Secret Wonders, one of the earlier and harder to get level Xs. But you can see he doesn't run it. He's sacrificing maybe the extra HP and power that Gardevoir level X could give you for more consistency. And I can see why you would do that. If you're going to put Gardevoir level X, it means you can put... Well, he only runs three Gardevoir, so I guess he could have added it if he wanted to. But you take up a valuable spot, and this is important. And, you know, like I've said, it, it's a slower card. You know, maybe you don't always want to use it. Gardevoir is all about the locking. I think it's a, it's a good trade-off there, sacrificing a, a bit of power and health for consistency. I can see why he would do that. And where was I? Yeah, we're talking about Luxury Ball. Yeah, just grab any Pokemon. Pretty good. And then the one Poker Turn. This is only here for... Crobat. I don't think there's any other Pokemon that can make use of this. So this is basically so you can get an additional Flash Bite, and that's it. The only thing that's left to talk about is the energies. He has five Psychic Energies, one, only one Fighting Energy. Maxing out Call Energy. Call Energy is your way to just not get fucked if you play first, and then your opponent plays something like Kindra, let's say. You play this down, you use it as an attack, and you can grab Pokemon. So it's like your... It's like Bridget, our Bridget back then. I guess if we played first, uh, people like that. So they can instantly get a bunch of Pokemon down. It functions as an energy too. You know, there were no enhanced hammers all day back then. So it's not as bad to run special energies. And then he has a one rainbow energy just for flexibility. This can become anything. And the upper energy. This is the interesting card I want to talk about. Like I've mentioned, this is before Heart Gold Soul Silver came out. So there is no DC, so decks like Lux Chomp couldn't take advantage of it, but obviously Guardi Gallade couldn't take advantage of it either. Guardi Gallade really appreciated DC when it came out, because you could just attach a Psychic, Fighting Energy, whatever, then attach a DC, and then either Gallade or Gardevoir were actually ready to attack. So it sped up the process significantly. Now without it though, you know, obviously they don't have that option. But Upper Energy is as close as you could get. And this is why I feel like they shouldn't have reprinted DC. They really made a major miscalculation when they released that. But what the hell would I know? Maybe that was their plan. Because it really messed up the, the Dominant Pro format. It made Garchomp basically too good. He was already good. It made it the most broken Pokemon along with Rock State Geo Level X. And I guess they were setting things up for the black and white format. But they could have easily just included DC in black and white, if you ask me. Anyway... So what upper energy does, basically, when you're down in prizes, this becomes a DC. That's it. Excluding Pokemon. Yeah, so I guess 
you can't actually use it on level X. So that's my mistake. I guess <laughs> Garchomp was never going to be broken, even without the, even with uh, with this, he couldn't be, it wouldn't be able to use it. Anyway, it's basically our DC, a fair DC. It's a DC that has a cost at least. With this, you're going to be down in prizes anyway, I believe. Cordy Gallad is a slower deck. You slow down the opponent, lock the opponent, take a few turns maybe to set up, get your energies in play. So maybe your opponent was going to take one or two prizes. And, you know, even though Galley can take an instant knockout, Gardevoir does just about enough damage. Set, set your opponent up for, let's say, two hit KOs maybe, doing 60. You're not necessarily going to be in a prize lead most of the time. So upper energy should be alive most of the time, I guess, until you basically have control over the game. So this is why it's in here, and what gives this deck a fighting chance in a format where it's Diamond and Pearl through Arceus. You know, there's no DC. Uh, this deck is pretty good, pretty solid lock deck. So I don't think there's anything else to talk about. There's probably a lot of things that I forgot, but this is one of the iconic decks, Guardi Gallade from the Dominant Pro era, one of the strongest decks, and for good reason. People used Gardevoir as a tech and decklist for worlds, I remember, just all sorts of things. Uh, very, very powerful. And on its own, it's a very strong deck. A lock deck that has options for a power attacker in the form of Gallade. Uh, you could use mid-game, uh, late game even, of course. You have, uh, you already lock trainers through Spiritum, and then, of course, you lock with Gardevoir, you can use Telepaz, use an additional supporter. It's a slow deck, but once it gets going, you can see it's quite powerful. An iconic deck from the Dominant Pro era. Uh, like I've said, I think I'll do more of these deck analysis. I don't think I did this one as good as the Haymaker one. I feel like there's more stuff I could have said. But, you know, it is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys subscribe. Uh, leave a like. Please share this with your friends. I would like, I would really like to get noticed, show people these sorts of videos about the Pokemon TCG. And that's basically it. I'll see you guys next time. Sebro 24 was sad.